Wood can be used for a huge variety of applications. But there is still a lot to be discovered in modifying and engineering wood for new sustainable products. The Wood Material Science Group at Aldo University explores how different non-toxic wood modification processes work and how they can be applied to new products. Yeah, wood can be modified in different ways. It can be chemically modified or impregnation modified or thermally modified to give the most common examples. So wood modification, you always make permanent changes in wood and that the changes are supposed to be positive, so you enhance some properties. One of the core properties to look into is wood and moisture interaction. So how does um, water molecules influence the, the wood? In wood we have the sorption sites where water molecules enter. So in chemical modification we are blocking those sorption sites with another molecule. And for example in um, impregnation modification we are filling the voids with, um, with a substance that inhibits entering of the water molecules. General basic principle is, is often the same that the cell wall is kind of changed that we're causing a permanent swelling of the cell wall but uh, they all have their different advantages and disadvantages and we, we try to make them as efficient as possible. In thermal modification, the aim is to reduce the sorption sites by degrading the hemicellulose with heat. Yeah, so hemicellulose is there amorphous. Um, so what happens is by the heat and, and a bit of moisture that is probably pre present, uh, it cleaves the chains. Yeah? Uh, and they are then in, at, at heat, at, at dry heat, they are uh, dehydrated. Um, so they are forming furantite derivatives which become volatile at higher temperatures. So they are cleaved and then they become volatile and, and leave the wood, thereby we have a mass loss. But they are also like very different reactions involved. The degradation products, they may not just leave, they may also react with other cell wall polymers that are still present, um, forming crosslinks or other kind of reactions, so it's very complicated. Thermally treated wood already exists in the market, but the fundamentals of the phenomena are not fully known. Improving these methods will require a deeper understanding of the microscopic interactions. The role of this kind of fundamental science is paramount in developing new wood products and more sustainable treatments for wood. In a business Finland-funded applied research project, chemical, thermal, and mechanical wood modification are combined to develop and commercialize a novel design cladding product. The new embossing method initially developed by researcher Hemmo Honkonen, is based on traditional knowledge among woodworkers. So if you have a wooden table or something and you get the indent in it, you drop something on it or something, then you can repair it by, by putting some hot water on it, and that's going to make the, the fibers swell back up again and the indent is, is going to disappear. So that phenomena is, is like, uh, that's common knowledge uh, among woodworkers. So that's basically where the idea came from. Could you use this phenomena to, to create a different kind of patterns instead of uh, flattening out indents? The project aims to make the process cost-efficient even on an industrial scale. In addition to the visual effects, the method could offer other valuable functions in the future. Wooden deckings are usually quite slippery when they're wet, so, so maybe you could uh, create a, a pattern that would increase the friction of, of such surfaces or then it could maybe have acoustic properties if you would use it in in walls have a certain kind of texture that absorbs or diffuses the sound or then it could possibly be used in in joinery somehow that, that you would uh, create different kind of joinery where where this uh, swelling action would would somehow be the feature that that joins pieces together the research group aims to combine three methods in one process. Combine uh, silicate treatments and a fire retardant treatment, do one single treatment. So that this cladding product would have all these three different uh, properties when it comes out from our production line. So it would have these embossed patterns and weather and fireproofing uh, treatments. Apart from new products, sustainability can be improved by using all tree species to the highest possible value and longest carbon sink. Birch is a great example. Currently, it is mainly pulped. So it is stronger and stiffer material compared to spruce and pine. The density is higher. With this higher mechanical properties, the strength and stiffness, we end up uh, with certain engineer wood products that can outperform softwood. I think one of the 
uh, benefits of using birch into these engineer wood products would be that we take lower quality material that is not currently being used by plywood and upgrading it to longer life cycle application uh, in the sense that when it's used in structures then it can be used there and, and storing carbon there for 50 plus years. The development of new wood treatment methods and new wood products both share the common goal of extending the life cycle of wood products and the carbon stored in them, making the most of the valuable resources that forests provide.